U.S. This presentation is March 24th, 2022, U.S. History, Chapter 8, Part 2. Esta es la presentación uh, del capítulo 8, parte 2, y deja compartir mi pantalla. Pato, do you have the link up for for the for the movie? I can watch it later. I'll put. It's gonna. It's in the um. It's in the uh the module. It's already there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, dolores de crecimiento, growing pains. So la rebelión de whiskey. Uh, si se acuerdan del, del otro día, um, habían, Adams había puesto un impuesto sobre el whisky americano uh, de como siete centavos el galón, algo así. Y los granjeros, granjeros del oeste sintieron que el nuevo gobierno federal favorecía a los comerciantes de la costa. La manera mejor para ellos de vender su grano fue convertirlo en ginebra y whisky porque las distancias eran muy grandes y cómo iban a transportar el grano así en forma de grano. So, su mejor manera de poder vender su grano fue convertirlo en ginebra y whisky. Y el, el impuesto afectó a su habilidad de vender su producto. Um, Porque costó más su producto que el producto de algo de importación. O por lo menos ellos pensaron así. Usaron violencia e intimidación contra los oficiales y la gente de dinero, poniéndoles a uh, tar, no sé cómo se dice, tar con, con plumas, uh, golpeándoles, um, intimidándoles de varias maneras, interfiriendo con el correo. Y luego hasta empezaron a, a negociar con España y Gran Bretaña solicitándoles el apoyo para formar su propia nación. Eso no les funcionó. Um, so, if you remember from the other day, um, Adams had imposed a seven cent per gallon tax on American whiskey to raise money to pay the federal debt. And... Um, the small farmers in the western part of the country felt like the new government, the new federal government, was favoring business people on the coast by doing this. Um, this was partly because the best, the easiest way for them to be able to sell their grain was to convert it to gin or whiskey. Um, it was very difficult for them to transport quantities of grain um, over long distances. It would rot. Right, so if they convert it to gin or whiskey, they can they can then sell the gin or whiskey. Um, so the tax affected their ability to sell their product. The book doesn't make it very clear. Um, I'm assuming that this was because maybe people could get it cheaper uh, from some foreign country due to this tax, uh, but the book doesn't make that clear. Anyway, these people, you know, they were so angry that they used violence and intimidation against um, government officials and people they perceived to be wealthy. Uh, they even went so far as to begin to negotiate with Sp Spain and Great Britain, asking for their support uh, for them to go ahead and form their own country, to secede from the United States and form their own country. Um, but Washington uh, put that down pretty fast. He sent um, 13,000 troops to put an end to that rebellion. And it was put down. Washington mandó una fuerza de 13,000 soldados para poner fin a esa rebelión. Y sí, uh, fue exitoso um, lo que hizo Washington. Ya los rebeldes ya no podían um, seguir. All right. Uh, hubo guerras con los indígenas que están intentando um, proteger a sus territorios, impedir a los blancos que agarren más de sus terrenos. Um, y sobre eso trata la película que vamos a ver hoy.
So there were wars uh, with the Native Americans. The Native Americans were trying to defend their territory and keep the white settlers from taking even more of their lands. Um, and we'll be watching the movie um, about that. La Presidencia de John Adams. Uh, 1796 fue la primera elección con dos partidos, el federalista y el republicano demócrata. Los de la rebelión de whisky apoyaron a los republicanos demócratas porque vieron a los federalistas como apoyantes de los negociantes de dinero. Hubo mucho rencor entre los dos partidos por los asuntos de la revolución francesa y la rebelión de whisky. Este, sin embargo, ganó John Adams federalista. Aunque hubo ya muchos uh, republicanos demócratas um, que estaban abogando por sus puntos de vista, sin embargo, ganó John Adams, que era federalista. So, um, John Adams presidency. 1796 was the first election with two parties, the Federalist Party and the Democrat Republicans, Democratic Republicans. Um, the people who had rebelled, who did the Whiskey Rebellion, uh, supported the Democratic Republicans because they, by and large, uh, supported the notion, uh, this idea of yeoman farmers out on the frontier, small landholders, um, which, of course, influenced the policy towards Native Americans as well. Um, there was a lot of rancor between the two par parties because of what happened um, in regards to the Fran French Revolution and also because of the Whiskey Rebellion. So, um, regardless, though, John Adams, who was a Federalist, won the election. <clears throat> he tried to improve the relations with France um, so that they would not keep... Um, taking American ships. So what's happening right now is that the British and the French are fighting with each other and um, both of them take advantage of the situation to steal American ships. Well, to cap, to cap, uh, to capture American ships. So I think I read in the book, you can read it in the book, um, something like France took something like 800 ships within the space of two years. So um, that was not a good thing, of course, for American business. Um, he also, John Adams, also wanted to improve the naval, the navy. At the time, um, there was only one navy ship, <laughs> so he wanted to build a stronger navy, and he started to do that. Um, and also during this time, Congress passed a law in 17, I think 1789 that let, went, mm, no, 1798 that was good until 1802, I think. Anyway, this lay, this law was called the, um, the Alien and Sedition Act. Uh, it lasted two years, so it must have been 1798 to 1800. Um, there was not, so the idea was a lot of this happened because of the Haitian Revolution. They wanted to be careful about who they were going to let in the country because they did not want anyone getting rumors. They didn't want the French revolutionaries getting people to rebel. They didn't want uh, the Haitian slave owners to tell other people what had happened in Haiti so that the slaves in the United States would rise up. Um, but during those two years, not a single immigrant was actually deported. However, and this was a fe the Congress was held mainly by Federalists, 25 Democratic Republicans were accused of sedition, which is uh, basically um, writing things that are... Uh, contrary to the security of the country. And, uh, and so only Republican, uh, Democrat Republicans were accused of this. And 10 of them were actually um, sentenced, so sent to jail because of it. And you can read in the book what the fine, the fine was something up to $5,000, which 
for those times was a very, very lot of money. I don't know, probably at least 20000 in money our time, but probably more. Okay. Um, okay, so ganó John Adams. Él intentó mejorar las relaciones con Francia para que no cautivaran los naves americanos. Um, como en un espacio de dos años, habían captivado, cautivado um, como ocho, ochocientos y tantos barcos, naves americanos, los franceses. So, él pensó que era necesario aumentar la fuerza naval porque en aquellos momentos solo tenía un nave, la fuerza naval. So, él quiso construir más naves para aumentar la fuerza naval. La ley sobre los extranjeros y la sedición um, expiró después de dos años, creo que fue 1798 hasta 1800, pero pueden ver en el texto para asegurar. Durante ese tiempo, bueno, la, la razón de esa ley era para que no vinieran extranjeros a fomentar rebelión. Tenían miedo de que vinieran franceses, quizás uh, revolucionarios, que vinieron a fomentar revolución uh, con gente como los de la rebelión de whisky. Y también tenían mucho miedo de que los, los que estaban huyendo de Haití dijeran qué era lo que estaba pasando en Haití um, y dieran ideas a los esclavos para que se fo también fomentaran uh, rebelión. Um, pero durante los dos años que fue vigente esa ley, no se deportó ningún inmigrante. Pero sí acusaron a 25 republicanos demócratas de sedición, que es traición um, por escrito. Y 10 de ellos fueron sentenciados a final de cuentas. Ok. All right, and so obviously if you read the textbook, you'll get a lot more detail about this. En el texto hay mucho más detalle. All right. Oh, tengo que estar viendo el reloj. La revolución de 1018. Uh, mil, mil ocho, mil ochocientos, perdón. <laughs> de mil ochocientos. Esto refiere a la transferencia tranquila del poder cuando los republicanos demócratas ganaron la elección sobre los federalistas. So, en 1800 ganaron los republicanos demócratas, algunos porque se portaron muy mal, <ríe> entre ellos diciendo cosas feas, igual que ahora, bueno pues. Y este, tenían miedo. Uh, de que a lo mejor habría violencia, pero no hubo violencia. Uh, y por eso le llaman la revolución, porque cambió el poder de un partido para otro sin nada de violencia. Los republicanos demócratas aprovecharon de las diferencias de opinión dentro del partido federalista. O sea, entre ellos, en el partido federalista, se habían dividido en dos y estaban disputando... Um, sus ideas y hablando mal unos del otros y así los republicanos demócratas aprovecharon de eso y publicaron algunas de las cosas que ellos estaban diciendo um, entre ellos y Jefferson Thomas Jefferson ganó la presidencia all right so the revolution of 1800 uh, refers to the fact that after um, I guess it would have been 16 years of Federalist um, power in the presidency and the Congress. Um, Jefferson, who was a Democratic Republican, won the election of 1800. And it had been um, a very disputed um, election time. People were mudslinging. <laughs> Nothing new. Basically the same kind of stuff that goes on now. They were mudslinging, but the Democratic Republicans caught a break because the Federalist Party was kind of divided in two, and they were mudslinging amongst themselves. And so the Democratic Republicans actually published some of the things that the Federalists were saying about each other, and this worked to their advantage. 
Um, and Jefferson ended up winning the presidency in 1800. La Presidencia de Jefferson. Jefferson sirvió dos términos, um, igual que Washington y Adams. Um, Washington puso el precedente de solo sir servir dos términos de presidente. Jefferson promovió la agricultura vendiendo lotes pequeños que podían alcanzar la gente trabajadora, pero solo los blancos siempre y terrenos robados siempre. Eso es lo que siempre um, me estoy acordando, que cuando están disputando esos terrenos del oeste, de por sí son terrenos robados de los nativoamericanos. Um, pero Jefferson va a promover la agricultura um, en vez de promover tanto el negocio um, de los comerciantes. So, uh, Jefferson's presidency, he served two terms, so that would be until 1808. He promoted agriculture uh, by selling small lots in the Western territories that working people could afford to buy, um, but obviously only to, to white people. Um, and obviously we have to keep in mind all the time that we're reading about Western expansion that these are um, lands that are stolen from the Native Americans. There are many broken treaties. Um, you know, the Native Americans were here first and the uh, Europeans just kept marching westward and taking more. All right. Um, another thing he did, he, he got us into our first uh, international or war that wasn't domestic. Uh, there were pirates that were attacking American ships off the coast of North Africa. So he declared war against the Islamic states, what was it? The Islamic states of Barbary. That's the north coast of Africa. Um, so, otra cosa que hizo, él nos metió en una guerra porque habían piratas atacando a naves americanos um, en la costa norte de África, que se llamaba the, the Barbary Coast, y él declaró guerra contra los estados islámicos de la costa Barbary. Y el libro no da detalles acerca de eso. There's not many details about this particular uh, war in the uh, book, except that it started It started in 1801. It doesn't say anything else about it. Um, so I'm assuming it must have gone well for the United States. I don't know. Um, otra cosa que hizo, uh, si se acuerdan de la película que vimos el martes, Napoleón, Tuvo problemas porque tenía la revolución en Haití y luego estaba uh, intentando tomar toda Europa para Francia y era muy ocupado allá perdiendo esa guerra. Y como necesitaba fondos y necesitaba ya no tener la molestia de manejar los territorios de las Américas, uh, vendió Luisiana a... Thomas Jefferson. Bueno, a Estados Unidos, pero Thomas Jefferson es el que hizo el, el tratado para comprar Louisiana. Y luego uh, él mandó a Lewis y Clark para explorar el territorio del Louisiana Purchase y a final de cuentas llegaron hasta la costa oeste, como si saben la historia. Um, eso haría un buen proyecto de, de medio término. Uh, Algo acerca del viaje, las, las exploraciones de Lewis y Clark. Ganó la elección de 1804 debido a esa compra. Porque esa compra da, les dio mucha más oportunidad a los blancos expandirse aún más al oeste. Right? Um, algunos federalistas dudaron que la constitución permitiría una, un, a un presidente añadir territorio así. So, están hablando de, de qué es lo que permite la Constitución. Todavía hoy en día hacemos eso. Pero en aquellos tiempos apenas estaban empezando haciendo la prueba de la, la Constitución. ¿Qué permite y qué no permite? 
Um, y luego la gente del norte se preocupa, preocupaba que los nuevos territorios permitirían la esclavitud, disminuyendo la influencia de los estados libres. Si se acuerdan, hicieron el compromiso de que los esclavos contarían, um, contarían tres de cada cinco de los esclavos um, para calcular la población de cada estado. So, los estados del norte que no tienen esclavos ya están preocupadas que su poder um, va a disminuir si hay muchos estados con esclavos. Como están contando tres de cada cinco esclavos como parte de la población, les da más representación en el Congreso. Ok. So, um... One of the big things Thomas Jefferson did was to buy the Louisiana uh, Territory. Napoleon was having trouble with Haiti. He was trying to take over Europe and having lots of trouble there. And so France just couldn't really deal with its uh, North American territories. And he needed money. And so he offered to sell um, their territory in the United States, which was called the Louisiana Territory. And But it goes from the border of Canada all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that I put a little picture of the map here. Um, so, and once he purchased that, once Jefferson purchased it, he uh, sent Lewis and Clark to explore the territory. Eventually they ended up on the West Coast, so they didn't just explore the Louisiana Purchase Territory, but they went even further. Um... I was suggesting that this might be an interesting midterm project to um, talk about the Lewis and Clark uh, explorations. Um, or you can focus on Sacagawea, who's, who was the person who was their guide for the whole trip. Native American guide. So uh, Jefferson won the election again in 1804 because of this this purchase that he made. This purchase was very, very popular um, with small farmers because it's going to give them access to land. So white settlers are very happy uh, about the fact that uh, Jefferson made this purchase. Some of the Federalists, on the other hand, doubt that the Constitution would permit a president to add territory in that way. So we're already, I mean, we still do this now. This is why we have a Supreme Court. People are already starting to argue over what the Constitution permits and what it doesn't permit. Um, but this is new at the time, of course, because the Constitution hasn't been alive for that long. Um, another um, negative perspective about the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, people in the North, in states that were free states, were worried that the new territories uh, would permit slavery, and so we'd have more slave states coming into the Union as the territories became states, which would diminish the influence of the free states. So if you remember back to uh, our talk about the Constitution and the compromise that was made, for counting the population uh, to determine representation. And the slave states were allowed to count three out of every five slaves as part of their population for the purpose of getting representation. So you can imagine that the more slave states there would be, the more um, the slave states would dominate the politics in the country and dominate policy in the country. And uh, free states didn't want that to happen. All right. Preguntas o comentarios? All right. Vamos bien, vamos bien. All right. Esta es la última diapositiva. La guerra de 1812. So, cuando Napoleón se hizo emperador de Francia, él se hizo emperador. <laughs> la guerra entre Gran Bretaña y Francia empezó otra vez. O sea, supuestamente es una nueva guerra. Pero como hemos estado viendo desde el principio, Francia y Gran Bretaña siempre estaban en guerra. <risa> Ambos tenían la práctica de interferir con los naves americanos. So no fueron solamente los franceses, sino que también uh, 
los británicos y los británicos no solo agarraban las naves, sino que forzaron a los soldados, a los, um, ay, ¿cómo se dice? Sailors. Sailors. Forzaron a los, no me acuerdo. Um, a los que a, a los sailors de los barcos trabajar para ellos para los británicos All right. alguien si sabe la, la traducción de la palabra sailors me dicen so uh, con eso el congreso autorizó al presidente declarar la guerra contra Gran Bretaña al principio pareció que los Estados Unidos perdería, pero al final Gran Bretaña quiso hacer paz. Tenían, estaban ocupados con Francia en Europa y estaban ocupados con los territorios del norte y estaban ocupados en el Caribe intentando proteger su negocio y a fin, final de cuentas decidieron que mejor dejaran a los Estados Unidos uh, que ya dejarían de luchar con ellos. It's uh, marineros. Marineros, sailors. gracias. Uh -huh. So, Gran Bretaña, los británicos tenían la práctica de no solo uh, cautivar a los naves, sino que a los marineros también y forzarlos a trabajar los con tripulantes. ellos. Tripulantes. 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 <laughs> tripulantes y marineros, pues. <laughs> All right. The 1812, the War of 1812. So uh, when Napoleon made himself emperor of France, the war between Great Britain and France started again. Um, you may have noticed this. In fact, I'm going to make a chart so we can start plotting different trends, historical trends, and this would be one of them. Great Britain and France are always at war. <laughs> They're always fighting with each other. Um, so, and they both had this practice of interfering with American ships. And so the French were stealing American ships. The British were not only stealing the ships, they were forcing the sailors to sail in their navy and to fight with their navy. So, um, and I don't think they were even calling them prisoners of war. They were just forcing them to serve. Um, so Congress finally authorized uh, Jefferson to declare war against Great Britain. Oh, no, this wouldn't be Jefferson, whoever came after him, Madison. So um, at first it looked like the United States was going to lose, but finally Great Britain wanted to make peace. Great Britain was very occupied with France in Europe, fighting with France in Europe, trying to stop Napoleon, um, fighting with France in Canada um, as well, and fighting with France in the Caribbean. And so um, Great Britain just preferred to make peace with the United States and not have to worry about fighting with the United States, even though it looked like Great Britain might have won if they'd kept going. Uh, the United States had some victories too. So la guerra interfirió con el comercio de la gente de Nueva Inglaterra ellos no estaban muy a favor. Muchos de ellos eran federalistas. Y a la gente que estaba a favor de la guerra, les parecieron antipatriotas los federalistas y perdió todo su apoyo el partido. Por varios años solo hubo un partido, el partido de um, republicanos demócratas. So, um, estar... Antiguerra en este caso hizo que um, desapareciera todo el apoyo a, al Partido Federalista y ya desapareció a final de cuentas el partido en sí y solo hubo el Partido Republicano um, Demócrata. So, uh, this war interfered a lot with the business, uh, businesses, for the business people in New England. Remember, their main business is import and export across the Atlantic. So the war was making things very difficult with them for them. They weren't really in favor of the war. 
and a lot of them were also Federalists. If you remember, <laughs> one of the reasons the, Republic, the Democratic Republicans didn't like the Federalists is because they felt like the Federalists were protecting big business, um, and in particular the business of people in New England. Not the slave owners, but the New England business people who were doing import and export. Um, so the um, New, English, New England business people were not in favor of the war. A lot of them were federal, Federalists. And so the people who were in favor of the war um, felt like the Federalists were not patriotic. And so the Federalist Party lost all its support. And for quite a few years, um, there was only one party, the Democratic Republicans. So the Federalist Party just disappeared at that point. And that's all for today. Eso es todo para hoy. Let me...